Okay, guys, I will switch to English now so that we can all understand each other. Uh, I live here actually in Lviv, so maybe some of you may know me. My name is Alina. I work as developer advocate at Oracle Labs, and there exactly I work on this project called GrowVM. So today we'll have two sessions about GrowVM. So image deep dive meetup. I will talk about GrowVM as a project, how it was created, where it is going right now. I will give some intro to what GrowVM can offer for Java applications and also to native images. And then my colleague David will pick up this presentation for the dark side. He will offer you perspective from the compiler engineer's point of view, how the native image is working from the inside, how it is actually possible to IoT compile Java, and how it is different, and how it compares to the typical dynamic execution of code in Java. So let's go on. Yeah, safe harbor statement. GraalVM. Um, let me just do this quick checkup. How many of you have heard about GraalVM? OK, OK, I'm really excited and happy. And how many have tried using it? Well, uh, except for our team, okay, you're cheating. <laughs> okay, so I really hope that after this meetup, maybe uh, some, like more people will start using it, and you will get this. Oh. oh, yeah, I need to talk to you afterwards, but actually I... <laughs> yeah, but actually I do have slides about that too, so wait, and you will learn more about it. Okay, and do you yeah. Once again? And do you use it in production? As always, yes. As, well, if you're talking about me personally, I do work with it because I'm, you know, from Grovium team. But Oracle itself, itself uses it. I think the public information is that our Oracle Cloud infrastructure is using it and actually in production. They switched from Java to GrowVM. And also, we have a new story about NetSuite uh, using GrowVM in production. So follow our blog. I'm planning to write a new blog post about it. Okay, let's start from the basics right, very quickly. So GrowVM is a virtual machine, and it was designed with two ideas in mind. The first was to run programs more efficient, meaning faster and also consuming less resources. And the second one is to, de to make developers more productive. Once again, by running your code faster, but also uh, allowing you to have these new capabilities like polyglot, IoT compiling Java, and so on. So these are the ideas that are actually behind GraalVM as a project. And how do we achieve it? First of all, we uh, want to offer high performance for abstractions of any language, meaning that no matter what language you choose, you can still get high performance for your application. Because I don't know if you face it, but sometimes people think that uh, abstractions, meaning uh, writing code in a you know, proper, manner, uh, using abstractions, using best paradigms, is uh, a trade-off with performance, meaning that if you want to have a performance program, you need to write it in a very certain level and kind of manually adjust for performance. Well, we think that it not necessarily has to be true, that you need to write good code, and we will make it fast. That's something on our side of things. Uh, second uh, goal of our project is to offer low footprint and low memory consumption mode for Java programs. That is actually something we'll be talking about a lot today because this is exactly this native image capability. One more is convenient language interrupt. We will see how GraalVM supports many and many languages and you can actually bring your own custom language on top of GraalVM platform. And the last one is that GraalVM can be simply embedded in various environments, for example, such as databases, and you can use it there and get access of all the capabilities that GraalVM offers in those environments. Now, uh, this is the most high-level overview of what GraalVM can do and can offer. So this is a chart showing on top the languages that GraalVM supports, and below are the platforms in which you can use GraalVM. So for languages, obviously, GraalVM can run languages like Java, Scala, Kotlin, basically all the JVM languages. Uh, that is the context below here, OpenJDK. So in the context of OpenJDK, we can run your normal and modified Java programs just like your usual hotspot VM does. Uh, next, we can also support languages like JavaScript and Ruby. We have uh, th those languages implemented on top of GraalVM platform. 
Also, if you are looking into things like uh, statistics and machine learning and data processing, you may be interested in languages like R or Python. And we do also support native languages, li languages that compile to LLVM bitcode. You can also run all of that on GraalVM. Uh, now, the platforms where you can use GraalVM, I mentioned OpenJDK, but also you can use it in the context of Node.js to run your normal and modified Node.js programs. Uh, very interesting case, and I will show it afterwards. You can use GraalVM in database and have access to more languages right in your database. And the last one is this actually native image capability that allows you to compile a Java program to a standalone binary and run it fully independent of any Java runtime. So uh, very quickly, once again, what GraalVM offers, those are high performance, meaning you can get high performance out of the box if you're using GraalVM as your runtime. Fast startup with GraalVM native images, polyglot, because you can use all those languages together in your application. And also, uh, this is something I particularly care a lot about, is GraalVM is open source. So you can contribute to it. You can look what's inside it. The project is on GitHub. It's pretty easy to do. One more interesting thing is it, it is production ready because the exact organization where we work is called Oracle Labs. So we do a lot of research, scientific research. And for many years, I think eight or nine, it was a research project. We did a lot of PhDs on it. We did a lot of research, but right now, it's completely ready to use in production environments. So if you're interested in it, uh, yeah, it can be uh, safe using it in production. Yeah, and it comes in two editions, community editions, which I mentioned is open source. You can use it uh, as if you like fully uh, free of any license. And also we have enterprise edition, which would require you, you to have a commercial license to use it in production environment. And yeah, one more note about open source. This is an overview of all our open source repositories. You see there is quite a bit of code. And if you're interested in any particular component like compiler or language implementation or tools like Visual VM, once again, you can see it on GitHub. Yeah, talking about our language ecosystem. So a few months ago, we had this kind of poll voting on Twitter about uh, what GraalVM language is the most exciting for you. How do you think, uh, which language was it? Java. <laughs> yeah, funny enough, I kind of thought that you, you would say Java, but we kind of predicted it, and we only included non-Java languages in this competition, because otherwise it would be really fair, yeah? So surprisingly, even for me, for example, Python won. I also bet on JavaScript, but yeah, I was also wrong. So this is like a funny thing we did, trying to understand what are the most you know, uh, demanded languages from our ecosystem. Uh, so the reason why all of those languages can be easily implemented on one platform is because GraalVM offers you some ready-to-use tools if you want to bring your language on platform. And it optimizes the whole thing and allows you to run the whole thing in one environment. Yeah, I will uh, structure my talk in a way that I will briefly go through non-Java languages, and then I will switch to Java and native images so that it will be you know, a logical way to proceed to the second uh, talk today. So we have a JavaScript engine. It is highly compatible with the latest standards, and we constantly test it against thousands and thousands of NPM modules to make sure you can use all of them in your application. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for some particular NPM module or Ruby gem or something like that, you can make sure if that's working or not with GraalVM right now. We have this compatibility tool where you just basically type its name and you can check whether or not it's ready to be used on GraalVM. But for JavaScript, it's like in this example, on this slide, you can be pretty sure it's ready because the compatibility there is very high. Yeah, uh, we get this question sometimes. Uh, any Nashorn users in here? Well, not in here, but sometimes we have it. So people ask if I can migrate from Nashorn to GraalVM. Uh, yes, you can, and we have a guide to help you with that. And with GraalVM, you can do all kind of crazy, crazy things. Like, for example, this is an application combining JavaScript, Java, and R to output this one application. 
and those languages are really working together nicely because they're implemented on one platform. Actually, let's maybe do some demos here. Uh, yeah, this one. So what I have here, oh, okay, what's happened? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me you didn't see it? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty nice demo. And it's kind of a spoiler to David's uh, session because he has dark slides. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not super happy about this setup. Uh, yeah, I could, but I guess it should be fine. Let me just maybe. Okay, it's adjustable. Cool. Okay. Okay, anyway, let's do it. So what I have here is a Java application, and also it has some JavaScript code inside. Let me maybe make it bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening? Why is it? Cool now? Cool. Yeah. So what I have here of, or maybe let me quickly do mirroring because I'm not really comfortable with this setup. Yeah, should be fine. Yeah, so what I have here is a sample application. It's a Java program. Yeah, so as you see, it's a pretty normal Java program, but it also has some JavaScript inside. So that line over there, context eval, is where actually you tell, you, you tell us that you want to use JavaScript next, you specify the language, and then you provide the actual code, and you can run all of it together. So since I'm using Grow VMs as, as my default Java distribution, I can simply do this, and it will run all of that together. I will do a quick spoiler into like the second part of my talk. Uh, since this is a Java program, I can also AAT compile it and build a native image of it. I think I actually did it already. Yeah, I have it compiled over here, and I can run it as a native application like this. So maybe you've noticed it's, it was even faster this time because it's already pre-compiled and it has less things to do uh, right now at the runtime. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, database. So I think this is a pretty cool example. You can actually use Grow VM languages whenever you embed it. And in this case, we are using NPM modules to validate some data right in our database. So this, is, this, this time we are validating whether or not something is an email. And the first time it looks like a valid email. Yeah, like hello world at oracle.com does look like an email. And the second time it doesn't. So it's pretty easy to use the already existing libraries and modules in your database in this case. And if you want to do polyglot applications, we have also tools for this, because perhaps you would need this. So we have like a special distribution of Visual VM where you can also work with polyglot applications like this. Uh, talking about performance, our JavaScript engine is comparable with V8 in terms of performance, as you can see on those charts. So that's for JavaScript. Uh, also, we have an R implementation, so if you're doing statistics, this might be something interesting for you. And the same goes for Python. I just have to warn you that Python is more or less uh, a young language in our ecosystem, so it's, in terms of compatibility, it's not quite there yet. But if you're like a curious user of Python and you want to try it on Grow VM, uh, you can do it. And I, mentioned, I want to mention this cool case of companies uh, using Grow VM in production, Andre. Mm -hmm. Using Grow VM in production. Yeah. yeah. So there are those cool guys. Uh, they are Dutch national police, and they use Grow VM to incorporate R to use, like, to apply some data processing uh, things in their Scala workload. So your example of uh, comparing JavaScript and Grow VM. Where, uh, no spoilers, no spoilers. Oh. I have it in my slides. <laughs> no spoilers. 
<laughs> we do follow Habra Habra too, yeah. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, and talking about more languages and more capabilities, you can actually access GPUs from Graal VM uh, applications and languages because we have this project called GR CUDA that we developed together with NVIDIA. So uh, if you are looking into something like this, this might be interesting for you. Now let's move on to Java. Uh, I will be kind of brief here because I don't want to steal David's spotlight. So I'll go very briefly through it. So for Java, if you are like considering Grow VM for Java, I would like you to maybe take at least this one slide out of this presentation because Grow VM can do for Java both. Like you can run your application being JIT compiled or IoT compiled and those both modes are fully working, fully supported by Grow VM. Because sometimes people uh, get confused about what Graal VM can do or cannot do, and the native image, like the AUT mode itself, is so exciting that sometimes people think that that's the only thing Graal VM can do. But it's not true. You can run the normal Java applications in JIT mode or run them in AUT mode. So those both things are supported. Yeah, and talking about Java and JVM languages, uh, if you are working with Scala or if you are considering Scala, you may want to look into GrowVM because specifically for Scala, since it produces slightly different bytecode patterns than Java does, we are able to optimize that specifically well and remove, for example, unnecessary object allocations and speed up Scala applications particularly. Once again? Like on your slide, like Enterprise Edition has like the, the highest value for speed up. Uh, what do you do with it? <laughs> yeah, so Enterprise Edition is slightly different than Community Edition. Like functionally, they are, I would say, uh, mostly equal. You have all the capabilities, like all the languages and native image and all of that. But uh, Enterprise Edition has a few more performance optimizations. So typically, we recommend like get both, compare both. If you are getting significant speed up with Enterprise Edition, look at Enterprise Edition. But in many cases, Enterprise Edition will provide you more performance. And that, then it's your call whether or not you are willing to go with it or you are happy with Community Edition. For Scala specifically, even Community Edition will give you something like I don't know, 15% um, speed up out of the box. And if you, are, if you want even more performance, you then can look into Enterprise Edition. Yeah, native images. So any of you familiar with the concept of Crawl VM native image so far? OK, not a yeah. You're not following the session. Sorry. I know that you are familiar, so you can just say yes. Yes. OK. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so Grow VM native images, uh, what we call it is this technology that allows you to compile Java applications ahead of time into a native binary, which would be uh, fairly small and will start really fast. Uh, that is because it no longer requires Java runtime to run and it already contains all the code that the application actually needs to be run. And it's all already pre-optimized, so it then can start really fast when you run an application the first time. Yeah, that's basically the way how it offers instant startup and also low memory footprint. And it's IoT compiled using the same compiler that we use in the JIT compilation mode. Yeah. I will not talk much about the implementation uh, details because David will cover that. I will just briefly go like what you can do with it and how you can uh, use it with your framework of choice and things like that. So why it is so cool and we saw this tweet and we kind of like it. Uh, for example, like one of the cases where you can use GrowVM native image is that if you are considering moving to microservice architecture or if you are starting a new project from the ground up, you may look into Graal VM native image for it because that's basically something you want in a microservice environment for your application to start fast, scale well, and don't consume that much memory. 
And yeah, the tweet that I mentioned is from uh, Bruno. I think he's from Microsoft, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea. You're very helpful today. So uh, he says, before you think about moving your rewriting your Java application into Golang, just take a look and consider Grow VM native image, because it might do the same for you. And it's not that there is something wrong about Golang. In fact, it's a nice language, and many people like it. But just the, the whole idea that you need to rewrite your perfectly fine application and then maintain completely different, like it in a completely different form, is not something that you necessarily have to do if there may be an easy way to do it. Talking about uh, frameworks, and Yanri, this is your favorite one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so there are multiple frameworks which support GraalVM native image capability. And if you want to try GraalVM native image, you can do it with your like uh, custom written application. But also, it's very easy to do it if you are using one of those frameworks. So Micronaut, for example, uh, support GraalVM native image really well. And they have really nice guides and many applications that you can try and play with it. And see for yourself how it is working for you. Uh, yeah, I guess my slide order is slightly. Yeah, I, I like rearranged my slides, and I'm a bit confused now. Sorry for that. Yeah, this is like an overview. I wanted to compare uh, what's happening. Slideshow. Once again? No, no, if I, if I were, that would be perfectly fine. Unfortunately, I'm not, yeah. So this chart is ways to, uh, uh, like, it, it shows you startup time for a different application, like for the same application with different frameworks. But the bottom line when we're comparing here is the startup time if you're going with native image or if you're going with uh, traditional, like, JDK 12, JDK 8 setup. Uh, the bottom line here is not comparing frameworks one to another, but rather comparing how those two different setups uh, affect startup time of your application. Basically, no matter what frameworks you're looking at, you will get this fast startup with native image. And the same goes for memory uh, usage once again. So if memory is important for you, because, for example, your cloud uh, vendor charges you for it, you might look into native image as the way to run your applications. Uh, talking about frameworks once again, this is also Halidon. So you can look into those examples and follow those guides to build your application. One more is Quarkus. Uh, also offers this ability to run applications really fast, compiled to a GraalVM native image. And one more over here, uh, this is a screenshot of uh, a talk presented this year at DevOps Belgium, where uh, the Spring Boot team presented uh, their latest uh, their latest demos and roadmap for GraalVM native image support in Spring Boot. So if you are waiting specifically for Spring Boot support, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in release 5.3 coming up later uh, this year, they uh, will support GraalVM native image capability out of the box. And that is something I can once again show you. So if you want to try how GraalVM works with Spring Boot application, that's actually possible right now. You can go to GitHub and get this project called Spring Graal Native. And it includes this experimental book, but also includes some samples of the applications, Spring Boot applications, that already can run as GraalVM native images. So for example, let's go with this one. I already uh, compiled it, and I have over here, so I can start it like this. Yeah, so you see, it's a Spring Boot application. Let's see if it's really up. Yeah, it says high, so it basically doesn't do much. But you see that it's up and running. And if you take a look here, it started in 0 0.2 seconds. Uh, that's Around a, 30. Once again? Around 30 minutes. 
Minutes? No, not minutes. Just depends on the machine you're running. Let's check during the break. I think it was maybe a few minutes on one machine, but it's like very basic max, so it shouldn't be super fast. Just 32 gigabytes of RAM, latest. Uh, no, no, it's, it's pretty basic and it was fairly fast. Yeah, but the bottom line here is that uh, the idea is that if you can build this image once, then you can run it every single time really fast. So basically, it's not that critical. Uh, the like the image build time itself and also the idea is that uh, if you wanted to start really fast you need to move all the heavy lifting to the image build time so doing as much as possible during the image build time would allow you to start faster so that's basically but yeah it's an interesting question let's try try during the break build it from the ground up yeah go ahead Can you go once again? Sorry, I did not hear. Okay. Uh, is there uh, any approach that uh, uh, helps me to run uh, my application in the debug mode without executing this long uh, building phase? Run your application in debug mode? In the debug. Honestly, I'm not sure how to answer it and I'm sure like uh, I follow the question quite right. Just run it on top of your graal VM and the default Java execution sends IC compilation and prep compilation of on the on the heap that Graal native image actually did for you. Uh, doesn't affect the, the debugging of your logic inside oh. of your code. Okay, so so you mean that uh, I can uh, I need to use this long building process uh, only for building only yeah. before building yeah, yeah, you can just develop it like the way you like and then just build it in the end and yeah, it will be ready to go. Yeah, but there another question. Can I run Graal VM actually in the bug mode? So the mode will connect to the end of the bug. And is the application behave as similar? Uh, you mean when it is compiled as a native image? Yeah, it's already compiled and yeah, I know that's for the way I get it, that you can compile it as you normally, uh, like you can debug it the way you usually debug uh, native applications, or uh, there is something you can do when you actually write it, when it's still like Java code and you can do something about it, that's like another option to go. You know about this common stuff, like it works on my local machine, but it has uh, issue on production. <laughs> so how to debug actually production instance? Uh, Do you practice connecting debugger to production? Yeah, a few times. In my Remote debugger? <laughs> Sorry? It was a brave man. It was not fast, but it was possible. You're a mad man. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, let's move on. And uh, show you also one more Spring Boot application. Uh, I think, no, it's not called that way. Yeah, so this one, yeah, let me just zoom out because I zoomed in for the first demo. So this is basically a more fun application, kind of has already UI and stuff. So yeah, you can kind of click it and see the way it works and so on. And it has been compiled as a native image. So once again, it started in what, like 0 0.5 seconds. Yes, moving on. So that was for Spring Boot, and if you want to try it, this is actually the URL where you can get it and play with those demo applications. Yeah, demo. Yeah, and you can do more crazy stuff with Graal VM. So for example, you can uh, write your applications in Java and then have them as, for example, applications for those old platforms like iOS and so on. We have this demo application. The way I understand is that on platforms like iOS, you cannot dynamically execute code. That's why our native image is really helping there. And we are working with Gluon team over there to make this project move on. Yeah, for real world projects, uh, 
how you can use native image. So as I mentioned, there is quite nice support from the different frameworks team. So an easy way would be perhaps going with one of those frameworks. Once again, uh, what you can do is to uh, build your application as a native image with this flag, no fallback, and it will tell us that you want to actually only run it as a native image and not to go to back, back to the JVM mode if something does not work out. Also, I think that David will be talking about this more. So since native image is pre-compiled and we need to know everything at the image build time, uh, there are those you know, like concerns around Grow VM that it does not support things like reflection and so on. Well, that's not true. We do support it. You just need to provide us this configuration file so that we know what exactly do you want to use. But also, we have a tracing agent that can allow you to uh, get those configuration files easily and provide them to us. And also, uh, about initializing application classes, we have this changed since crawl VM 90.0. So right now, uh, defo by default, all classes will be initialized at the image runtime. But this is something you can also play with, and you can uh, move the initialization of specific classes to image build time, depending on your priorities for your application. Uh, so I just want to compare these two modes really quickly. Uh, when do you want to use Grow VM native image? Basically, when the startup times matters for you a lot or memory usage ma matters for you a lot. So it will be typically environments like microservices and cloud where those things are important. But uh, since JIT is really tailored for peak performance, if you are looking into some you know, long running server side application, that JIT might be the best way to go for you. And yeah, I want to talk a bit about companies that already use Grow VM and how they do it. So Twitter has been using Grow VM for, if I'm not mistaken, three years now. They use it in production, really happy about it. And yeah, they get something like 12% performance out of the box, and even more if you are a compiler guy and you know how to tune it. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, I think this is something we've talked about in the beginning. So they moved from uh, Java to Graal VM, and these are some numbers they got basically out of the box just by switching to Graal VM. So improved peak, peak performance and garbage collection time. And the NVIDIA thing I've already mentioned, and yeah, at the classic, the case that Andre wanted to talk about. So this is something fairly new as a public story, but I think they are using Graal VM in production since the end of 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So there is actually an article about it on Habra Hubber, and they promised one more article with the actual implementation details. But in a nutshell, they use a Grow VM for React server-side rendering. And I'm really looking forward to the second article. I'm really curious to learn more details about it. Yeah, project roadmap. So if you're considering Grow VM, perhaps you would be curious, like, what is the release model, and how do I need to prepare for releases, and how can I plan for them? So we have this roadmap on the website where you can actually check the dates for each particular release, and also different kinds of releases, like long-term support, security updates, and so on. We are actively working on Grow VM. So these are some of the updates we delivered recently. Uh, JDK 11 based builds. Many people have been asking about those, so finally they are here. Though when we ask back, like which Java version are you using, everyone says Java 8. But that was a super popular request, so yeah, it's finally here. Also, we've added things like WebAssembly support and uh, a few more features that if you are curious about, we can talk during the break. And something we are still working on is that we are working on extending our platform support. We are also working on new GC, specifically for native images. We actively work with community and with people in the ecosystem to support even more libraries and frameworks so that you can work with them. And yeah, if there is something you think of, you would like to see in Grow VM, you can contribute it or you can let us know and we can see if we can implement it. These are the ways to contribute if you are interested in. So for example, if you are an open source contributor or you are looking into becoming one, there are multiple ways. So even if you just report an issue or help us out with docs, that is also very important. 
And just to summarize this intro part, one new integral VM, if you want to get high performance for your application, no matter what language are you using, if you want to have this fast startup low memory footprint mode for your Java applications, you can look into native images. Also, it offers this convenient language interrupt between different languages, and it can be simply embedded in various environments. Yeah, if you want to look into it. There are simple ways to get it. You can download it from GrowVM. If you are interested in project updates, we are very active on Twitter, so follow us and kind of give us feedback there. And also we uh, provide support. We have this community Slack, we have a mailing list, so you can ask questions there directly to our team. Uh, that's all I had. I guess we will have a break now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to say that we'll have a break, and then the sec uh, second part will be like about specific details, native image. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, I want to build uh, a Docker image uh, in which uh, Graal or VM native uh, image will be run. How can I do it? Yeah. So you can, uh, so the thing you get in the end, yeah, is a platform specific binary, right? So you can already compile your application and have this net platform specific binary in the end. And we are working, actually working right now, I'm not sure if I can share much publicly right now, but we are working for even more, like easier way to use VM for Docker and for Kubernetes. Uh, 